Hey everyone, thanks for coming to my talk today. We are going to be diving into two of my favorite things, Taylor Swift and, well, I guess I should mention GitOps too. If you are in an organization that using GitOps to some extent but feels that you could be doing more with it, I'm here to help. I'll be sharing insight from my own GitOps journey, tips from the field of social and organization psychology, and of course, plenty of flashbacks to Taylor Swift discography to help you along the way. Before we dive in, I'd like to introduce two key figures who will be popping up for our discussion, myself and Taylor Swift. I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Bank of Paulim, Israel's largest bank, with a master's degree in social and organization psychology, and I'm still eagerly waiting the era tour in Europe. As for Taylor Swift, well, she's an award-winning singer-songwriter, a cultural icon, and the inspiration behind this GitHub journey. Through our discussion, we'll explore a problem, Taylor's perspective on it, and insight from psychology to tackle it, like how to boost your self-control. The problem, in our previous workplace, we built an incredible pipeline that handled a ton of stuff and utilized Pulumi, an infrastructure as a code tool, to manage the environments. But maintaining this beast became a nightmare. It was legacy code, no one wanted to invest time in updating it, and pushing patterns to the live environment was a constant source of stress. At some point, the drift, the gap between the code and the live version, grew so significant that even making minor changes felt like walking a tightrope. To address this issue, organizations should strive to foster a culture where employees embrace change and don't shy away from failure. However, even in such supportive settings, fear can still creep in. This is where GitOps steps in to help mitigate those fears. Changes are thoroughly reviewed and approved, they can be tested in lower environments or on smaller subsets of environments, and with Git, rollbacks are a breeze. Over the years, my ad hoc script collection grew into a chaotic alphabet soup of scripts, named A, B, and even Z. I had no idea what these scripts did, or where they were applied. Thankfully, transparency is on the rise in organization. In our case, knowing what was done, to which cluster, by whom, using the declarative changes that are stored in the source code, can eliminate the need to decipher cryptic script. Git and declarative changes handle the documentation I never wanted to do, freeing up my time to record a new album and hit the road for a tour. The problem, you get a call from a programmers, all too well. They explain for 10 minutes, their voices laced with frustration that their workload has been aborting unexpectedly for the past 10 minutes. Turns out, the new disk scheduler plugin you recently installed on the Kubernetes clusters has an unexpected side effect. It's leaking all pods, periodically. But wait, once the plugin is removed, the programmers are fine with the other policies, so you just need to reinstall it. Just go to the console. Fill out the form again, but with what? If only it was in the YAML format. With GitOps, you can achieve the impossible, like having the right YAML file at your fingertips, ready to save the day. It takes a bit of motivation to embrace GitOps, but the rewards are worth it, as research shows that being motivated increases performance, and we all love that. The problem, in my previous workplace, we had a company policy that mandated code reviews before merging pull requests. As an admin, I could also skip the review process if it was an urgent hotfix. Guess how many hotfixes I had to deal with? Being told how to dance with GitOps through rigid company policy isn't as motivating as taking control and making your own moves. Locus of control is the concept of whether you attribute what happens to you to external or internal factors. With external locus of control, you believe external factors, like luck, determine your outcomes. Conversely, with internal locus of control, you take ownership of your own success. Studies have shown that having an internal locus of control positively impacts job performance. So let's ditch those unnecessary hotfixes and embrace an internal locus of control. The problem, 
doing things ad hoc is easy as pie. Writing an app set for the first time might be challenging. Guess what I picked? Fix self-control. But according to the strength model for self-control, it's like a muscle that can be tired of the use. And that you can train your self-control muscle to become stronger. So next time you're juggling multiple tasks, consider the impact on your self-control reserves. Prioritize the most important tasks and tackle them one at a time, giving each one the attention it deserves. And let's be honest, if you put in the effort to write that upset and store the code in Git, you might just discover usable components for future projects. That bigger factor you've been delaying? Well, the customers don't particularly care how your code is written. And the diet? We're starting tomorrow. Deadlines, as we all know and love, have a knack for forcing us to do things we've been putting off. Deadlines won't kill you, but self-imposed, meaningful deadlines can actually help you tackle tasks that require self-control. If you don't finish this refactor by next week, you will miss out the error movie. It's called pre-commitment, and it's a powerful self-control technique. External deadlines are still more effective, so consider adding this refactor to the sprint. Yet another problem. You are eager to contribute to the open source community. You choose your favorite project, let's say Argo. Fork it, delve into the contributor's guide. Smooth as tofu, right? But then you hit a snag. Your minicube fails to start and you're left scratching your head, unsure how to proceed. The fix? Mentorship. Whether it's through Slack, Zoom, face-to-face -face interactions, or within your company, there's a wealth of expertise waiting to be tapped. And mentorship is a two-way street. You can learn from me their experience, and they can witness your growth and dedication. So don't hesitate to reach out and ask. You've heard the buzz about upsets, and you're keen to make the switch, but there's a mountain of YAML files to sort, group, and revamp. And until this low priority task is tackled, who knows, overall might just make a comeback as the latest fashion trend. The fix? Collaboration. Collaboration is a workplace superpower, and it's just as beneficial for you as it's for the company. So try your inner Taylor Swift and embrace the power of collabs. Grab some cookies, gather your colleagues, and pitch the idea of teaming up to tackle more GitOps projects. The problem. You yearn to reclaim ownership of your master recordings, but the path is blocked. You aspire to embrace GitHub more fully, but something holds you back. Just like Taylor Swift tramped the recording of her early albums, you can reclaim control over your GitHub's journey. Psychology research suggests that ownership can enhance job performance, and more importantly, it can empower you to tackle those GitHub project you've been putting off. Take ownership of your Stripe overalls. You can transform GitHub's journey into a resounding success. Embarking on the GitHub journey can be a daunting task filled with twists and turns. I've stumbled and fumbled along the way and I'm still finding my footing. But I'm here to encourage you to spark that inspiration, whether it's Taylor Swift unwavering determination or something else that ignites your passion. Take that first step and let the journey unfold. Trust me, it's worth the ride. Thank you.